Hello everyone, I am Dr. Maheshwaran KS. Welcome back to Raw Online. I am a lecturer from Department of Prosthodontics, Sri Ramachandra Faculty of Dental Sciences. Today we are going to be looking at principles of design in removable partial denture, design considerations. Okay. I hope you guys have already checked out the other presentation which is principles of design in RPD factors controlling stress transmission. Okay. This is a continuation of that. This basically deals with design consideration that you need to know in order to neutralize those factors and forces. Okay. So, contents will be diving directly into the design consideration. We are going to be look at what direct retention can do, class position, class design, what splinting of abutment teeth is, where it is indicated. We are going to be looking at indirect retention, auxiliary rest, how important occlusion is in your design, denture base, major connector, what important role they play and there are three basic philosophy of design which is basically stress equalization, physiologic basing and broad stress distribution. Okay. So, coming to design consideration, it is basically controlling the stress. Now, you know what are all the factors that can transmit the stress to the abutment tooth. Now, you need to know what are all the components of the RPD, what are its function and where do we locate these components, where do we ideally place them so that we can make best use of these components to neutralize these forces or to minimize them at least, if not completely neutralize them. That is, that is what design consideration is. You need to know which component fits where, which is the best place, which is the type of class we need to choose, okay, for each and every situation, right. These are like basic rules that you need to apply for any type of situation. Now, let us take direct retention. We all know that retention for a removal partial denture is from your direct retainer, which is part of your clasp assembly. But we also know that it is this retentive element of clasp assembly that transmits most of the destructive forces to the abutment. Okay? So, even though they are retaining the removal partial denture, they are also damaging the abutment in a lot of situations, okay? especially your Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 situations. Hence, RPD design should keep clasp retention to a minimum. That means, you do not have to completely depend upon your retentive element to obtain all the retention. There are other sources of retention that you can tap into. So, what are these other sources of additional retention? Addition and cohesion. Addition like you know is basically the attraction between unlike molecules. So, it is the attraction between saliva and the uh, denture base on one side and saliva and the tissue on the other side and cohesion is basically the attraction between like molecules. So, the salivary layer that is coating the soft tissue will get attracted to the salivary layer that is coating the denture base. So, it is actually attraction between two layers of saliva. So, this addition and cohesion plays a very important role in complete denture. We all already know that. But you all might think that you do not have any peripheral seal for removal partial denture. Of course, peripheral seal is what makes adhesive and cohesive forces very important. But even though you do not have peripheral seal in a removable partial denture, the addition and cohesive forces still come into play. They will still act as a source of additional retention. Okay. What do we have to do to make use of this addition and cohesion? You need to make the denture base cover maximum available support. So, your final impression has to be correct. You have to do a proper border molding you need to record as much of denture bearing area as possible. Second thing, the denture base should accurately adapt with the tissues. You should not have any gap, you should not have any warpage. So, you need to cover maximum area as possible and then it, there needs to be a close adaptation to the tissues. These two are very important if you want to get adhesive and cohesive forces to work favorable to you to act as a source of additional retention. Okay. Next, we go to frictional control. So, frictional resistance to displacement is also a type of retention, right? So, increasing the number of guiding planes is what is important. So, what is guiding plane? It is basically the flat surface that you create in the proximal aspect of your primary abutments so that they are being contacted by the proximal plate or the minor connector portion of the RPD. So, you have two flat surfaces that are going to slide against each other whenever the patient inserts and removes the RPD. So, this is going to create frictional contact between the two 
which is going to increase your retention. It is not going to be easy for the RPD to get dislodged if you have good frictional contact between two flat surfaces, one being the proximal plate portion of the RPD and the other being the guiding plane which you have created on the proximal surface of the abutment tooth. Okay, So, this is how frictional control can help in additional source. Then you have neuromuscular control. This is something which we always tend to ignore, Okay, but it is important. It is very, very important for complete denture. For RPD also, it is important to a certain extent. So, you need to design the denture in such a way that it is harmonious with perioral musculature, meaning your tongue and your cheeks, okay, your tongue and your cheeks are not flat, right? They are curved. They have a convexity to them, which means your denture should mirror those. It should have a concavity, the denture flange from the tooth area, okay? This is where your tooth is going to come. From the tooth to the area where it is ending, to the sulcus region, it should not be a flat denture flange. It should not be a bulky denture flange. It should be a concave denture flange which will basically allow this convex cheek and this tongue to now act favorably and it will push the denture more towards the denture bearing area. So, this becomes a seating force. If you do not design the denture flange correctly, if you have kept it bulky, then this cheek and tongue are going to definitely dislodge the denture because it is coming in the way of the action of your cheeks and tongue muscles. Okay, they need to have enough space for them to act properly. If your denture flange is intruding into that space, it is going to push it away. Okay, it is up to you to design it in such a way that you can actually take the neuromuscular control, the help of neuromuscular control to retain the removable partial denture. Okay, so designing the flange is also very important. Okay, then comes the clasp position. So, you can't just place infinite number of clasp in a removable partial denture and make it retentive. That cannot be done. Okay, You have to try and keep the clasp design to minimum. That is what I already told you. Clasp can create a lot of stress on the abutment teeth. So, you need to try and keep it to a minimum. There are three types of configurations for clasp. 